hello, hello. Welcome in everyone to the third edition here in 2024 of the Missio Sessions, um, an exclusive webinar series designed specifically for you as our Missio community to add value to you uh, as men and women of God to continue to pursue your God-given mission and vision. We're so grateful that you joined us here on this Tuesday afternoon. We're really excited to invite another amazing speaker who's with us here today. Um, before we get started, though, just want to share a few quick updates, announcements from Missio for you to be aware of. First of all, uh, as you know, the fall semester is rapidly approaching, and we just want to encourage all of you, if you haven't already, go ahead and go through the process of enrolling for those classes in August intake and even October. It's never too early to do that. Just want to encourage you, if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and get that process started. Also, um, as our speaker is getting ready to, to, to come and share, just want to encourage you, as always, to be active in the chat. Um, if you have questions, we're going to have our Q&A time at, after the speaker shares for you to be able to engage with the speaker. So please, as you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat or have those ready to share for that Q&A session later on in the call. Finally, we're going to be sharing this video on our Missio YouTube channel, as we always do, as well as our Missio community. So if you know anyone here today who you think would really benefit from hearing from our speaker or from some of the conversations we have today, please feel free to share that Missio YouTube link with them or a link to our community. And when you're on that YouTube page, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button to help us get even more uh, traction here at Missio. Um, so uh, the final thing I'll mention is, as our speaker shares today, there is an interactive sheet um, a spreadsheet worksheet that's been shared with you before this meeting. If you have time, go ahead and pull that up. Um, if you don't, no worries. We're going to be able to share a screen and walk with you through that today. But we just want to make sure that you're aware that there will be times of some interaction with a, a worksheet as well. So um, again, thank you. Thank you all for coming here today. Uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and invite uh, one of Missio's summer interns to come and share a little bit more about our speaker. So Mackenzie, over to you. Hello, everybody. Um, today, we are going to be hearing from Pastor Robert Rosales. He is a full-time extension campus pastor from Charlotte, North Carolina. Pastor Robert has served as a staff member at Lakeshore Christian Fellowship for over 18 years and as an extension pastor for over 13 years. He is an ordained minister and is currently enrolled at Life Pacific University, earning his Master's of Arts in Strategic Leadership. He's originally from California and has been married to his wife, Yolanda, for 30 years. Together, they enjoy um, spending time with their dogs, going on camping adventures, and traveling in their trailer to the beach and mountains. Pastor Robert was not raised going to church and did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ as a child. But as a young man, as he was lost and heading toward a path of destruction, both two men that he worked with at a real estate um, office invited him to a Bible study, and he accepted so they would stop asking him to come. He went, and suddenly his heart began to soften, and when one of the men invited him to join his church the following Sunday, he accepted. Then at the church service is where he gave his life to Christ, and is grateful to have the ability to serve the Lord in this capacity. Um, over the years, Robert and Yolanda have served side by side in many different capacities, from cleaning the church to leading and serving a campus of people. They are passionate about making disciples and training them, reaching the lost. This is something they contend for regularly and strive daily to raise up leaders in the church to be healthy and strong in the Lord. The message Pastor Robert lives to share is the importance of daily time spent with the Lord through his word and how it shapes us as we strive to serve the Lord every day. He strives daily to continue to learn and obtain a teachable spirit so that he may grow as a son of God, a husband, a pastor, and a leader. He wholeheartedly believes being healthy in spirit, soul, and body is important, enables him to give his best to the Lord. He's grateful for all the new things God is continuing to do in his life and believes the best is yet to come. Please join me in welcoming Pastor Robert as he shares about the three mentoring models, what is mentoring and why we need it. Excellent. Well, listen, everyone, thank you so much for being with me. Not like you had a lot of options there, did you? 
Uh, I'm trusting that everything is going to be wonderful and that you're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed in our time together. Uh, let's do this. Would you just agree with me with wherever you're at as we start this presentation? Would you just agree with me in your hearts and let's just pray and ask the Lord to guide us and speak to us as we spend some time together? Father, we just love you and we honor you today. Thank you for the presence and the help and the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the ultimate teacher. We're so grateful. God, we thank you that you continue to lean into us and teach us and shape us and mold us and help us to grow in knowledge and understanding of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your power that's at work within us. And we're so grateful that we can do anything that you help us to do. We turn our hearts and our minds over to you for this next hour or so, and we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit here in our meeting, and we thank you that you would encourage us, you would fill us with faith, and we would leave from this presentation stronger and better and fuller than we were than when we got here. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name, and everybody said with me, amen, amen. Well, listen, over, over the last 30 years, I have been fortunate to be surrounded by men and women who at various times, whether I realized it or not, sharpened me, encouraged me, and helped me to step into God's purpose and plan for my life. As I'm looking back, and I'm growing in my understanding of the whole subject of mentoring and what that means, I'm realizing that I was surrounded with mentors. I was surrounded with men and women who spoke into my life and transferred insight and knowledge and skill set. And I'm so grateful for that. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of Proverbs 27, 17. And this is what it says out of the Amplified Version. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. And the message translation puts that verse this way. You use steel to sharpen steel, and one friend sharpens another. I think most of us know that a standard method of sharpening steel or iron is using a similar piece of metal. When the two scrape against each other, both pieces are shaped and rough spots are removed. And like that, two people can interact and help refine and sharpen one another. So that leads me to the title of my presentation for us today. Here it is, Three Mentoring Models. And the subtitle is, What is Mentoring and Why Do I Need It? If you've got your presentation guide, this is an opportunity for a fill in the blank. I want to start with a definition that we can all wrap our hearts around as it pertains to mentoring. Mentoring is a relational experience in which one person empowers another by sharing God-given resources. Let me say it again. Mentoring is a relational experience in which one person empowers another by sharing God-given resources. Here's a question that I want for us to use as we move forward this morning. What does it take for a Christian leader, a man or a woman, to live a successful life and finish well? Not just live a, a successful life, but live a successful life and finish well. According to Dr. Robert Coleman, in his book, Connecting, the mentoring relationships you need to succeed in life, he points out that mentoring should be pursued throughout the life of the leader. He introduces what he calls the mentoring constellation model. And this model includes upward mentoring, where a leader receives from others who are more seasoned and more mature and offers experience to the mentee, the person being mentored. The constellation also consists of downward mentoring. And in this relationship, the leader is pouring into other younger, less experienced and mature followers of Christ. And finally, 
this constellation model involves lateral mentoring relationships. These are co-mentoring with peers. It could be another student. It could be someone in your uh, workplace. You're friends, but you're getting together for more than just coffee. You're sharpening one another. You're holding one another accountable. You're shaping one another. All of these mentoring relationships, upward, downward, lateral, all of these work together to help us stay accountable to one another and deepen our walk with the Lord, serve him well, and to strive to one day finish well. I love what Dr. Coleman says in his book. Listen to this. To finish well does not mean to reach perfection, but like the Apostle Paul, to keep pressing on toward it. So when your time comes to an end, you are still growing in your love for Christ and intimacy with him, still pressing on to make him known, still living as his disciple and loving the people God places in your life and relentlessly seeking to know and do God's will. Come on, that's a great place for an amen right there. I know you're amening with me. We all want to do that. We all want to serve God, fulfill our purpose, and very important, we want to finish well. A mentor is a person who shares God-given resources. A mentee is the person being empowered. And the transfer between the mentor and the mentee is called empowerment. There are several reasons that I want to touch on that can influence a negative attitude towards mentoring relationships in some cultures. But I also want to note that these are not universal across all cultures. Let me just mention three. One pushback to mentoring in some cultures could be respect for elders. Some cultures often value respect for elders and authority figures at a high level. And this can sometimes lead to a reluctance or hesitation among younger individuals to openly emphasize the word, seek mentorship among, um, uh, excuse me, to openly seek mentorship as it may be seen as challenging the wisdom or authority of some older respected individuals in that culture. So that could be a challenge in some cultures. The second challenge or resistance to mentoring in some cultures that I just want to mention is hierarchical structures. Many societies have hierarchical structures where seniority and age often determine authority and influence. In such contexts, mentorship might be more naturally expected to flow from older to younger individuals without explicit mentorship relationship developed. And the third area that I just want to mention that could have a negative connotation or a pushback on mentorship has to do with distrust of outsiders. In some cultures, there may be a historical or cultural distrust of outsiders or individuals not part of one's immediate community or ethnic group. And this can impact the willingness of individuals to engage in mentoring relationships with those perceived as outsiders or from different backgrounds. That's including a Western influence as well. Let me just pause and I just wanna ask this question. Think about this, because when we get to the end, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Can anyone in this meeting confirm whether any of these resonate or have any credibility. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Right now, what I wanna do is I wanna share four standard myths, or we could call them incorrect perspectives about mentoring. And here's a fill in the blank. Here's your first myth about mentoring. Here it is, only older people can mentor me. Now, this is not true because 
younger people than you and younger people than me have specific skill sets or knowledge in a particular area that we can learn from and that we can use to develop in life. So only older people than us can mentor us is a myth. Here's a second myth. A mentor and mentee must agree. The word agree is the fill in the blank. They must agree theologically on everything. Well, that's a myth because the goal in mentoring is to find areas of agreement, not disagreement. And a mentor who sees things differently than you and I theologically can still be used by God to pour into us and impart expertise, knowledge, and wisdom in a particular area of life. Myth number three, as, as it pertains to mentoring, a mentor must be perfect. That's the fill in the blank, the word perfect. All of us would agree that the only one who's perfect is Jesus. And God can use an imperfect mentor to share and impart experience and knowledge with a mentee, even though the mentor is not perfect. By the way, you'll never find a perfect mentor. And if you wait to find one, you might never find a mentor at all. And finally, the last myth that I want to mention some people would say, I do not need, emphasized word, I do not need a mentor. Well, I would say this, you don't need a mentor to live and go through life. However, if you want to live successfully, and if we want to reach our maximum God-given potential, and if we want to finish well, all of us need a mentor. As a matter of fact, the Bible supports this, and there are numerous examples of mentor-mentee relationships in the scriptures, and most likely, if a person thinks he or she does not need a mentor, then he or she does not understand the benefits and the value of a mentor relationship. Again, just to emphasize, mentoring is a relational experience in which one person empowers another by sharing God-given resources. I want to refer to the book again, Connecting by Dr. Robert Coleman, because in his book, he introduces three different categories for mentoring with nine different types of mentors. So there's three categories, but there's nine different types. And today, for time's sake, and to leave room for some Q&A at the end of our discussion, I'm going to cover three categories of mentoring, but only the three types of mentoring, not all nine. So again, just to reference, if you want to know, the title of this book that I'm gleaning information from and is changing my life is called connecting. And the subtitle is the mentoring relationships you need to succeed in life by authors Robert Clinton and Paul Stanley. Robert Clinton, not Coleman, please forgive me. So before we move on, let me just clarify. We're going to cover these three different types of categories, and we're going to cover these three different types of mentors. Type number one, fill in the blank, on your worksheet is an intensive mentor. Intensive, I-N-T-E-N-S-I-V-E, -E, an intensive mentor. What is an intensive mentor? Well, an intensive mentorship relationship is deliberate, it's specific, it's relational, and it's interactive. And it's usually in person, but not always. And it also includes specific goals and agreed upon accountability for the mentee, the person being mentored. A type of an intensive mentor is a spiritual guide, or we can also use the term a discipler. A discipler is a person who disciples another. And so this spiritual guide or this discipler mentee 
he enables or she enables another in the basics of following Christ. This spiritual guide will show someone how to study the Bible, how to properly interpret the scripture, how to hear from the Holy Spirit when reading the scriptures. This particular spiritual guide or discipler sometimes will have to address gaps in the character development of the person being mentored. This spiritual guide or discipler will sometimes encourage towards spiritual goals and lovingly hold the mentee accountable for some direction, for some calling from God and the gifts of God and the anointings of God that have been placed in the mentee. So that's the first type, an intensive, also known as a spiritual guide or a discipler. Now, I will mention this, and it may not be on the, the guide that I provided you. Just frame this in. It's highly advisable uh, for men not to mentor women alone or vice versa. You want to be real, real careful about that. If it's in a group setting, that's different. But I think that's all I need to say about that. You understand it's very, very important that we don't put ourselves in compromising situations. Let me move on. One of the ways that the Lord has enabled me and my wife to be a intensive type of mentor, and I think many of you can relate with this, is we have come alongside people over the years, and we still do, and we teach them how to read their Bibles and how to capture things from the Holy Spirit. That's an intensive mentorship relationship. That's a spiritual guide. One of the things that we like to use is a SOAP acronym. Some of you may have heard that. Some of you may use it. S-O-A-P. That stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. Taking them through a, a chapter. What's the Scripture that the Holy Spirit highlights to you? Write it down. Write it down in your journal. What's the observation that the Lord wants us to see in that text? What's been proven? What's authentic? What are some great commentaries and scholars that have already spoken into this and rightly divided the scriptures? What are we observing God doing in that place, in that time, in that context? Write it down. And the A, this is really important. We've been able to mentor people. Okay, so you saw the scripture. You saw the observation. Now, what's the application? The A. Write that down. Because the, the goal is to begin to apply the scriptures to our lives, right? And then finally, the P. Prayer. Write it down. S-O-A-P. This is an intensive mentoring relationship that we have and we continue to develop with people in our church and beyond. It's so important to be pouring into and mentoring, bringing up other people in the basics of Christ. Can anybody think of any of these intensive mentoring relationships that we can see in the scriptures? How about Moses and Joshua? How about Paul and Timothy? What about Barnabas and Paul? What about Jesus and his disciples? Jesus was the ultimate intensive mentor, spiritual guide. So that was the first type. The second type of a mentor, here's a fill in the blank if you're using your guide, is an occasional mentor. O-C-C-A-S-I-O-N-A-L. Occasional mentor. From time to time, God brings people across your path. God brings people across my path who help us for a short time, but in very specific ways. And this type of occasional mentor could be a teacher. All of us have them if we're enrolled in college, right? We've got teachers. And part of their role is to impart knowledge and understanding of a particular subject. A teacher downloads information and instruction and wisdom in a particular field that they're mastered. A teacher and a relationship between a teacher and a mentor it can be formal. Sometimes it's informal. What do I mean? Well, formal, if you're enrolled in college, like we are, we've got teachers and instructors and professors, and that's formal. But sometimes there'll be informal relationships that we develop from teachers, maybe through a podcast or maybe through a book, or maybe through a, a preacher or a teacher that we 
uh, feel led to or drawn to by the Holy Spirit, and they teach and they downpour and they put insight and understanding and skill into us from what they've mastered. So that second type of mentor is an occasional mentor. I love what Dr. Um, Robert Clinton says, no matter the subject, someone will always know more than you and be eager to pass it on. And we can be mentored by teachers in areas like leadership, group dynamics, language learning, womanhood, child development, problem resolution in groups, handling the dynamics of change. Learning with the mentor teacher is usually more focused, personal, faster, and often deeper. Now, I do wanna make this notation, it's worth mentioning. There are gonna be some unique situations that you may not be able to connect with a mentor in person or deliberately form a mentor-mentee relationship. You may not necessarily have the time in your schedule to meet with another person. And this is where our final and third category or type of mentor comes into place. And that is a passive mentor. So we've covered an intensive, an occasional, and now this is a passive mentor. A passive mentor is a mentor who can mentor without deliberate effort on their part. A type of passive mentor could be what we would call a historical model. And the historical model refers to a person who's already passed on, they're deceased, but their life or ministry is written in an autobiographical book or a biographical book, and it's used as an example to indirectly impart values, principles, and skill sets that can empower another person. For example, through books, through podcasts, through journal articles, through writings. One of the historical models that I glean from is Watchman Nee. I don't know if any of you ever heard of the author Watchman Nee. Two books in particular, The Normal Christian Life and Sit, Walk, Stand. Watchman Nee. Just incredible revelation and he has mentored me over the years just through his writings and he's not even with us anymore uh, a pastor and church planter and author by the name of wayne cadero from honolulu hawaii some of you may have heard of him in his book the divine mentor he shares that in a season after many years of pastoring he was burnt out he was stressed out he was struggling with his physical health, and he was ready to quit and step back from pastoring. And after encountering Jeremiah the prophet as a divine mentor in the Bible, in the scriptures, Pastor Wayne Cadero was encouraged not to give up and to stay the course as a pastor. So he did. And he credits Jeremiah as a historical, biblical mentor that God used to pull him up out of failure, out of defeat, and away from quitting. And this is the scripture text that really spoke to his heart. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, it says this, But if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in. I cannot. This spoke to him. In other words, even though he wanted to give up, the divine mentor in the scriptures, the prophet Jeremiah, spoke to him and realized that he couldn't quit. Even though he wanted to quit, he couldn't quit. And he became a divine mentor for him, helped him to kind of re-solidify his pathway as a pastor, got healthy, made some adjustments, and he's on pace to finish well. So a historical mentor could be a passive mentor. As I'm closing, I just want us to remember that Dr. Clinton refers to a mentoring constellation. This is important, upward mentoring. You're the mentee and you're receiving from a mentor. He also mentions downward mentoring. You're the mentor and you pour into the mentee. 
And then he mentions horizontal or peer mentoring. These are people that you go to school with. These are people that you work with. They're friends, but they're more than friends. They are mentors and you're holding one another accountable to serve the Lord and to finish well. Someone said to discover blind spots, build a circle of friends that will give you honest feedback. In other words, a network of mentors can help us by giving us honest feedback. God can use surrounding our lives with mentoring relationships to help us succeed in life and remember to finish well. I want to finish completely with Proverbs 27, 17 again. Listen to it. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. So those are the benefits of mentoring. That's what it is. And um, I'll pass it back over to you, Caleb. Fantastic, fantastic stuff there. Thank you so much for sharing, Pastor Robert. Um, there's a lot to, to unpack there. Before I kick it over to uh, my colleague, uh, Sydney David, uh, who is, of course, our Missio Mentorship Program Manager to facilitate a time of Q&A, maybe just an initial reaction, as I know everyone's going already thinking about some questions they have in their minds here in the next few minutes. Um, we, as a Missio team, if you are unaware, you're here today and don't know, we have a mentorship program that's available for you that accomplishes some of the very things that Pastor Robert's been sharing with us here today. So if you have not had a chance to learn more about that or want to learn more about that or curious to learn more, you can reach out to Sydney, who's coming on in just a moment here, uh, to learn more about that. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Robert, for sharing here from your heart. And uh, without further ado, I will kick it over to you, Sydney, to facilitate a time of, of Q&A now. Thank you, Caleb. And uh, just on that note, I just posted something in the chat section. Uh, friends, like Caleb mentioned, in case you want to learn more about our mentorship program, this is for you. I have shared the email right there. Please reach out and let us know how we can engage with you. So back to you, Pastor Robert. This has really been amazing. Uh, I tend to, uh, to lean more into the area of mentoring, and I'm very passionate about it. And one of the things that you kept, you know, talking about is the idea of, you know, sharing scripture, referring to some of the, you know, the men and women that have, you know, uh, that have impacted, you know, uh, your life, but also maybe wrote a book or wrote a statement. And these are all believers. And so I want to start off with a question regarding uh, uh, what this whole idea of Christian mentoring and secular. Okay, but before you come off to share, you know, a little bit about that, uh, I oftentimes we are quick to ask questions to the speaker who has been sharing, but this is a reflective question to our audience today. And these are students here on this call. A question for you. What is your why for mentoring, for a mentoring relationship? I believe that there are many needs, right? Uh, challenges, and, you know, you can call them goals that can be addressed in a mentoring relationship. And so what are those needs, challenges, or goals that you are noticing in your own personal life that you would love to be addressed in a mentoring relationship? That is for you, friends. And just think about that. And uh, back to you, Pastor Robert, just describe to us about this whole idea of what is, in regards to what mentoring is between secular and Christian or biblically-based mentoring relationships. Yeah, I think that's a great question, and there definitely is a distinction for us as followers of Christ, right? Have you ever heard that saying, eat the meat, spit out the bones, right? So I think many of us have heard that. If you haven't, what I mean by that is if we're, if we're looking at mentoring from a secular perspective, a non-biblical, non-Christian perspective, can we learn can we increase? Can we grow knowledge, skill, so on and so forth? Absolutely. However, we need to be very careful that we just eat the meat and spit out the bones. In other words, we have to be careful not to allow a secular perspective, uh, uh, an earthly, natural, limited mindset that is devoid of scriptural, fundamental foundations for us as believers. 
So I would say there's definitely a distinction. We need to be careful. I'm assuming that most people, if not everyone on this call, is a believer, is a Christian. And we just want to make sure that if we're pursuing a mentoring relationship, that we want to pursue one starting point, asking God who that could be to mentor us. And we want to pursue one where we're going to have a biblical foundation to support us. Right. That's an important distinction, in my opinion. Right, absolutely. And why I ask that specific question, Pastor Robert, is uh, at Missio, our mentoring program is designed around having life-on-life -life relation experiences between their mentor, right, and the mentee that is really oriented toward a vision for Christ-centered, world-changing influence. And through that relationship, we believe that vision, values, commitments, all the things that you've been talking about, conviction can be shared from one person to another. And we believe that through this kind of relationship, both the mentor and mentee can live out a godly-centered vision, which is, I'll just state it out for us, by God's grace to step forward as God's man or woman in my spheres of influence to serve his purposes for his glory. Amen. That is our mandate. That is a vision that is going to be a guide for all our for every aspect of our life, everything yeah. that we get to do. Yes. And that is really why I asked that question. And so yeah. are there any other approaches beside mentoring that could really help us serve or live out such a vision? Repeat that question, please, Sydney. Are there any other approaches beside mentoring, like we've been you know, defining that, that could really help serve the needs or challenges that we get to notice in our lives as individuals? Any other approaches? Yes. Besides mentoring? Um, I don't know how to quite answer that. I, I, I think that there are other approaches besides mentoring. Now, when you say besides mentoring, are you referring to us being the mentor or the mentee? For both, basically, yeah, for both. because, uh, yes, for both, because sometimes we've seen individuals, you know, start mentoring relationships and they say, you know, I don't think I need this mentoring. I don't need, you know, Robert to be, a, to be my mentor. Maybe I could get this knowledge from elsewhere, you know, maybe read a book or watch a YouTube video, like yeah. all these kind of forms that yeah. mentoring definitely gets to, you know. Take. Yeah, okay, I understand. Great, thank you. You know, I think that's a great question too, Sydney. Um, I wish I would have known 10 years ago, five years ago, what I know now and what I'm learning now. The more I'm learning, the more I realize how much I don't know and I need to learn. The way that I look at it is we are so desperate for mentoring. We're so desperate for these life-on-life -life relationships, and we don't even realize it. I really don't think outside of a relationship with God and Christ that we can glean the knowledge and the insight and the life experience that we need without this life on life relational experience. Could I go and try to find it from a podcast or a book? Yes. But technically that still falls in line with mentoring because we're gleaning from somebody, right? And it's all over the scriptures, this life on life. This is how we, I'll, I'll, I'll maximize this. This is how we fulfill the Great Commission. This is how All we right. fulfill the mandate to reach the lost and to make disciples and to raise them up in the things of God, regardless of their vocation. I think that mentoring is a key that is overlooked, undervalued. Um, I don't think that there's any other way. I think we're desperate for it. Oh, I love how you put it that way. There is no other way. And uh, I see some questions in the chat section, Pastor Robert. Um, is there an ideal mix of intensive, occasional, and passive mentoring, the different forms of mentoring that you talked about earlier? Yeah, I, I think there is an ideal mix. I don't know if I'm convinced that we'll, it will all be from the same mentor. I, I, I think that there's an ideal mix. For example, 
Uh, I'm starting a mentorship. It's going to be a little more intensive uh, tomorrow with a pastor that knows way more than me and I need to glean from him. So that's an intensive mentorship. But I also have uh, a passive mentorship in the church that I'm at. And I have a teacher that I'm gleaning from and I'm learning from. We don't meet every week. It's not set up officially like that. But I'm under his teaching all the time and I'm gleaning insight and understanding. So there's, there's a mix there. Um, so yeah, I, I think you can mix. I don't think it'll be from the same person. Does that make sense? Right. Right. I, hope that I think it does. Pastor Robert. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, just to add on to that also, I think the, the bottom line is for us to be really intentional and going back to the question I asked the audience earlier on, what is your why? Why do I need this mentor? Because I've understood, reflected that I actually do need a mentor in my life, but why do I need him? And what is this mentor going to do uh, in my life? So, yes. yeah, right there. So I, I hope people, friends on the call, that answers the question. Another one here is, as a person in leadership, how do you choose a mentor? Can someone have more than one mentor? Yes. I'll answer the second question first. I believe you can have more than one mentor because uh, you may receive something that you need from one mentor and something different that you need from another mentor. So I think that's completely okay. Um, and I would say that you wanna start pursuing who you choose as a mentor by asking God. I would start in prayer. I would ask the Lord to help you to find the right mentor that you need for the season of life that you're in and for what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and, you know, one of the things that helped me to figure that out was I made some personal goals, five goals that I'm holding myself accountable to. And then when I look at these goals, I can see the type of mentoring that I need within these goals. And then I took those to the Lord and the Lord gave me some clarity about who to ask to be my mentor. Does that make sense? Right. I hope that answers the right. question. Right. Uh, just a follow-up question again on that. Um, yeah. You know, from your own personal experience, uh, Pastor Robert, uh, what do you think are those essential elements for someone in leadership that, you know, for them to really successfully begin a mentoring relationship? What are some of those elements that I could look out for, I could really question for me to begin a mentoring relationship? As a mentee. Both as a mentor and a mentee. Yeah, so I, I think that when we're, I hope I'm answering this correctly, but when you're looking for a mentor, um, you definitely want to look for a person who's a person of character, a person who is in, in, our, in our world pursuing the things of the Lord, a person who has... Um, uh, a heart you can you can tell when a person who has a heart to impart knowledge to impart experience um someone who loves other people love is foundational right so those are some qualities and again i i would think what is it that you need Back to your question, Sydney. What is your why? Why do you need a mentor? Why do you want a mentor? When you can begin to answer that question, you would be surprised. We would be surprised. We might already be surrounded with people in our workplaces or in our churches um, yeah. that could be an ideal mentor for us. Not only that, but let me flip the coin. There may be people that God wants you to mentor. You have knowledge. You have been empowered by the Lord. You have a skill set. And, and God wants to use you to, to pour into, to transfer that into someone else. Uh, that's, that's a healthy part of mentorship, pouring into other people around you. Yes, absolutely. Hey, uh, there is really a good one here. Um, does it take friendship for you to have an effective mentor-mentee relationship? What are the boundaries based on what you've just mentioned there? Yeah. 
That's a great question. I don't think that that has to be the starting point if you're especially talking about an intensive mentor relationship. It doesn't have to be a starting point. Uh, um, I think that a friendship is helpful, but it's not 100% necessarily as a starting point. Starting point would be you feel led by the Lord to ask this person to be a mentor to you. You may not even know them very well. And through a series of conversation, they may agree. And you haven't been friends up to that point. But you're both led by the Lord and they agree. They've got something that they want to impart. You recognize it. So now you start your relationship. And through time, you can develop a friendship. On the other side of the coin, you might have a friend already. This is the peer mentoring. This is the horizontal mentoring that Robert Clinton refers to in this consolation. You, you may have a friend, a colleague, a, 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 an associate that's the friend of yours, but you want to begin to uh, sharpen one another. You want to encourage, strengthen, hold each other accountable to a new level in academic, a new level of career, new level in your walk with the Lord. And that friendship can be used to leverage that part of your mentoring relationship. So is it necessary? No. Is it helpful? Yes. Indeed. Indeed. And really, it goes back to the different, you know, the common myths that you highlighted. Yeah. You know, especially if we have those myths at the back of our minds while getting into a mentoring relationship, we tend to have a lot of expectations. If you are the mentor, you're going to have a lot of expectations from your mentee. If you are the mentee on the other side, you get into this mentoring relationship having a lot of expectation from your mentor, and only Jesus can meet those expectations. And you yeah. cannot have all these really put on one person. Like you said, no one is perfect. That's it's right. only Jesus who is perfect. Right. I don't know, Pastor Robert, have you uh, read a book that is called Jesus as Your Mentor before? Have you heard of it? I have not. Guess what? It's not yet written, but it's about oh. to be written. And those are some of the lessons we can learn from Jesus. And it goes back to the other mm -hmm. acronym that you really pointed out. You know, the scriptures, what do the scriptures say? Yeah. You know, to you as a believer, what do I want to gain from my mentor? What do I want, what, what, how, how can I live out a godly vision for my life? Yeah. Okay. And then you apply it, you pray about it constantly. Holy Spirit, you know, will guide and lead you to the right people that are yeah. going to speak into your life. Yes. I love two scriptures uh, that I usually uh, share. For the mentors, I really uh, get to share this, that, and I, and I encourage them to really always strive to, you know, reflect on this scripture. In Romans chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, ESV version says, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yeah. yours and mine. Yeah. That is what a mentoring relationship means for me if I'm wearing the mentor's hat. And to the mentee on the other side, I encourage them to leave out this scripture, these statements that you know we learn from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, that says, remember your leaders, those yeah. who spoke to you, and I love sometimes to bring it back, those who speak to you, right? Present, the word of God, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their yeah. faith. Yeah. That is what, you know, God is calling us to, to be a part of such God-honoring relationships yeah. that are going to build out mutually God-honoring leadership yes. from the mentor and mentee. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, any, uh, I see that, uh, yeah, one more question maybe before we bring this to a wrap uh, from Viola says, if a mentorship relationship isn't invoking growth or change, how do I stop it as a mentee? That is bringing a mentoring relationship to a close. How would you advise someone like that, Professor Robert? Yeah, I think a, a good idea is to start your mentoring relationship with a time frame, if you can. Uh, that's that's what I've been advised to do. So we're not entering this relationship for eternity, and we're not mentioning anything about 
a, a healthy close of our mentoring relationship, you might start your relationship with saying something like, hey, let's let's agree to uh, six months. Let's agree to three months. And then let's let's measure our goals as we're moving together in this relationship. And let's touch base once a month and to see how it's going. If you set those expectations up on the front end, it won't be so awkward because that could happen. It won't be so awkward getting six months down the road and you realize this isn't working, but you don't know how to share that with your mentor. So that's probably a practical piece of advice that I've learned. You can set that up on the front end to avoid any awkwardness or avoid staying with someone for any length of time that you feel like is just not where God wants you to be anymore. Yeah. I will say this though, as I'm, as I'm finishing, I'm 55. I wish I would have sought out an intensive mentor when I was 20. Right. I wish I would have known what I know now. I wish I would have personally intentionally pursued mentoring relationships the last 25 years don't wait we need them don't wait thank you thank you so much pastor robert well friends if you have any other questions please uh, continue you know sharing them in the chat section and they shared an email again i'll say it out for us mentorship at missio.io please uh I'll repeat mentorship at missio.io. Write to us and let us know how we can, you know, walk this journey with you. Uh, Pastor Robert, we cannot express again how grateful we are for your time. Uh, in mentoring, especially because that's the that's the subject that we are talking about here. There is never a time where we say that we've stopped learning. Learning continues for everyone and it takes humility to actually learn pick yeah. out those myths of having you know it's only an older person or a younger person you know that can mentor me or this person needs to have this amount of knowledge you know there's always something that we can learn from yes. one another from our peers you I know agree. very important fellow students that we are you know learning in the same cohort of yes. classes fellow teammates you know, at our different places of work, yeah. in our yeah. church community, so many places where we can find mentoring. But we need to be intentionally aware of our surrounding. And that can only happen if we are directly in line and pursuing a godly vision and pursuing a relationship with Christ so that yeah. he can teach us all these things. So once again, thank you so much, My Pastor pleasure. Robert. Uh, Glad I was able to uh, be here. Indeed. Allow me to kick this back to you. Uh, Caleb, please, back to you, sir. Wow. Thank you so much, Sydney. And uh, I echo you in thanking Pastor Robert for your time here today. It's been incredible. Um, you know, maybe just an additional thing to share that's been on my heart as well um, for everyone here on the call. Um, you know, sometimes I think uh, when we use the term mentor, we can have certain connotations, certain stipulations in our mind. Um, and, you know, sometimes we get uh, very narrow minded in what we think about a certain thing um, as humans in general. But when we think about a mentor, I think a lot of times you can look back on your life and you can see these influences, whether it's an older man or woman, whether it's a peer, as you're mentioning, Pastor Robert, in the lateral mentoring, or whether it's even someone younger than you. Just recently, I was with a group of, uh, of youth on a missions trip. And I can't tell you how much I learned from the way that they shared the gospel, from the way that they lived their lives boldly and fearlessly as 16, 17 year olds with their youth pastor. Unbelievable, unbelievable um, what you can learn from everyone. And as Mark said in the chat, Proverbs 1, 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. And as Pastor Robert shared here with us all today, Missio community, you can learn from anyone, right? And you can learn from someone who's older than you. And that's certainly a wise thing to do to find that Paul in your life. You can also learn from your peers, from your fellow classmates, from your students, other students going through uh, their academic journeys with you. Even if you're a master's student and you're talking to an undergrad, you can learn from them and vice versa. So let me encourage everyone to really pray about what you've heard today, here today, to consider the why of mentorship that Sydney has been challenging us with here today. 
and to think about the kinds of mentorship that Pastor Roberts outlined with us here today as well. Um, and take a look at your life there and see, are there any void? Is there, any, is there anything missing here that the Lord may be calling me into? And let me also encourage you as well on the side of maybe you're here today and you're always thinking about who can I seek out? Sometimes though, too, we have a lot to give and we don't realize it. And I just want to encourage you today here, here today, if you have felt like in your life, man, I've been receiving, 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 but I feel bloated almost like after a big meal and I, I need to give out. I need to yeah. I need to share. Seek out a mentee today as well, even in my, amidst your schoolwork. I know it seems like at times like you, you don't have time, but trust me, when you honor that that burden that the Lord's put in your heart to do that, he's going to honor you and he's going to yeah. really bring a blessing in your life. So those are just a few thoughts I wanted to share as well. But maybe before we close, let me kick it back to you, Pastor Robert. Pastor Robert, any any final words of encouragement you'd like to add as well to, to the group here? I think I just reemphasize what I mentioned just a minute ago. It, if I would have, if I would have sought out a mentor years ago, I think I could have saved myself some heartache, maybe some missteps. So don't wait. We all need these relationships. The sooner we can find them, I think the better off we'll be in pursuing whatever God has for us. Amen. Amen. 